Hello everyone, welcome or welcome back to my YouTube channel. My name is Lucy and today I've got my May TBR. So, for the month of May, why am I being so ambitious? I don't know, I just am. Um, but yeah, who knows. So, I've already gone through and made a list on my phone of the books that could be read this month. <laughs> and I've put all the physical ones that I have on my TBR shelf. And I thought we can just go through them and tell you which ones I will actually be reading. So let's get them down from the shelf. So here's my physical stack. Um, let's go through the books that I'm already part way through. So first of all, we've got Game of Thrones by George R. R. Martin. This is going to be on every TBR list for the foreseeable future because I don't anticipate finishing this for at least a good couple months. Um, I'm very slowly work making my way through this. It's sort of the book that is not a priority for me at the moment, but it is a book that I want to read slowly but surely. And yeah, I'm not gonna give you some options, it's Game of Thrones. You should know this. <laughs> I feel like most, <laughs> most people know what this is about. So it's a Game of Thrones. Like everyone is, wants a throne, so people die for it. There we go. <laughs> the second book that I'm currently reading is Horror Store by Grady Hendrix. I am page 112 of this book, so I'm here. Also, I did that thing where I used the flap as a bookmark. Um, don't come at me if you don't like that. So I just have done this. Even though I've got ample bookmarks to use, I still just use the flap. Um, so I'm buddy reading this with actually i'm probably reading both of these with the same people um joe hanani and kelsey and yeah this one is essentially an ikea catalogue-esque horror haunted house book so we're following the employees of a knockoff version of ikea in cleveland ohio um called orsk um and they are doing a night shift because they think someone's breaking into the store and destroying a lot of a lot of the merchandise. Um, and during this night shift, they're going to see that it's not it's a lot more than just people vandalizing the store. There's some horror elements to it as well. Um, so I'm really enjoying this book so far. I just need to sit down and read a little bit more of it. And the other book that I am already part way through is um, an ebook and I put it up on the screen here, but it's called The Rapper's Draft. And I've realized that this has been, pub it was published last year in the US and it was published here as well, but now it's been taken off and it's going to be republished this year in June, um, just in the UK. I don't know why they are doing a new publication date for it, I don't know why but essentially everyone's told me that it's a huge hit in North America um, and it's kind of like beach read um, so that's why I wanted to pick it up um, but yeah because I have not heard any UK peeps talk about this book maybe I've been li living under a rock but I haven't heard anyone from this side of the Atlantic talk about it either so it is about uh, two co-writers, Nathan and Katrina, and they have written a book together and they hate each other by the end of the process of writing this book. But they've been contracted to still write another book by the publisher. Um, and so it's about them coming together for their own personal reasons, other than co contract obligation, um, to write the second book and it's their romance of how they eventually fall in love I think it's a lot more to it than that but that's as much of a synopsis that I think I should give but I'm really enjoying this actually I will say the miscommunication trope is being used quite a lot but it's in a way that would make sense in real life and that's me saying that as well. I normally hate the miscommunication trope. So go in that with an open mind, <laughs> essentially. Okay, now we're going into the books that I haven't started for the rest of the month. A book club pick that I have on Patreon is Gideon the Ninth by 
Taz, Tamsin Murray, 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 I believe it is. Um, this, I think it's like a sci-fi fantasy. So the back of the book says the empire needs necromancers. The ninth necromancer needs a swordswoman. Gideon has a sword, some dirty magazines and no more time for undead nonsense. So apparently it, this book unveils a solar system of swords play, cutthroat politics and lesbian necromancers. The characters leap off the page as skillfully animated as necromantic skeletons. The result is a heart pounding epic science fantasy. So I, I've had this book for a good couple years now. Um, and I feel as though I should, it, this writing is very small. Um, but yeah, so it's a book club pick and I will try to get to it. I am a bit um, wearisome if I actually pick this up. Because um, it's not particularly calling my name. I'm not that interested in it but if I if I read a couple chapters and I enjoy it I'll probably keep going with it. Another Patreon book club is The Undertaking of Heart and Mercy by Megan Benin. I got this out for my library hence the uh, shiny copy and yeah I don't know what to expect from this I've never really heard anyone talk about it but it's true love might be the death of them. Hart is a marshal tasked with patrolling the strange and magical wilds of Tanra. It's an unforgiving job and he's got nothing but time to ponder his loneliness. Mercy never has a moment to herself. She's been single-handedly keeping birds and sun undertakers afloat in defiance of sullen jerks like Art Ache Art. <laughs> the man with the knack for showing up right when her patience is thinnest. Another, after yet another run-in with Mercy's Merciless, I don't like this alliteration already. After yet another run-in with merciless mercy, Hart finds himself penning a letter addressed simply to a friend. Much to his surprise, he receives an, an anonymous letter in return and a tentative friendship is born. Listen, does Hart know he's bearing, he's bearing his soul to the person who infuriates him most. This gives me YA death weird vibes with love letters. So I'm gonna go in with an open mind. How long is the book? 413, 416 pages. So I don't know, it's quite a small paperback as well. So hopefully this will be easy to read. Hmm. Again, it's not something I would have picked up, but I'll try it for a book club. <laughs> okay, and then one I was supposed to read in April for a Patreon book club was How to Sell Haunted House by Grady Hendrix. Um, I still actually really want to read this. I just haven't had the time to get around to it this month. So I'm going to do this in May, hopefully. Uh, but this is about a brother and sister who have to come home to the hometown to sell their parents' house who have recently passed away. Um, and I believe the house is haunted. And apparently the mother had really creepy dolls. So the, the dolls may be coming alive as well. Um, I do like Grady Hendrix with how, like... Ovi, yes, he is with his book titles. Like, you know what you're gonna get into when, when it's how to sell a haunted house. It's like the house doesn't want to be sold. <laughs> you, you get, you're gonna have some issues. Okay, and then another book club I'm in, honestly, all my TBR is just for book club. Um, but this is actually an in-person one. So I'm really, really excited for this actually. It's my local city's secondhand bookshop book haul book club oh my god there's a lot of words in that sentence um but the first book is i do not come to you by chance um i'm not going to be able to pronounce accurately the author's name but here it is on the screen for you um i did i again this is not something i would necessarily pick up it's literary fiction not my cup of tea but i'm gonna try meet people in real life and come with it basically uh, but this is about a guy Kingsley um his life basically goes to shit and he has to go to Ni back to Nigeria I believe um and he has to work for his uncle who's called Cash Daddy um and he goes 
into the and it says he's catapulted into the fast money world of email scamming where he discovers a profitable talent for persuasive st storytelling um so yeah i'm gonna try going with the open mind honestly this whole tbr is just like i'm gonna try <laughs> But I hope I can actually read that because I do want to be a, like have an in-person book club and meet some in real life bookish friends. <laughs> um, but yeah, so then for my book club, Lessons in Chemistry by Bonnie Garmus. This has only like, so I'm going to preface this by saying I haven't officially closed the poll for to choose what my book club pick will be for why haven't I read this yet. Um, but Lessons in Chemistry is in the lead by quite a long shot. Um, I think this has got 17 votes and the nearest competitor has only got 12. So, yeah. <laughs> um, I'm going to bravely put this on the list already. Um, but I do actually really want to read this. And I have such a stunning copy from Waterstones. Um, but this is kind of a historical literary fiction piece as well but i actually am more interested in this even though it still is literary fiction but we are following um elizabeth zott who in the early 60s is in a research team um and basically everyone is sexist towards her except for one person calvin evans um who she falls in love with and then a few years later, she finds herself not only a single mother, but the reluctant star of America's most beloved cooking show, Supper at Six. And it's all about Elizabeth's unusual approach to cooking. So it's kind of like one tablespoon ac acidic acid with a pinch of sodium chlor chloride. Um, so apparently it turns out she's not just teaching women to cook, she's daring them to change the status quo. So I, I do enjoy any sort of um commentary on equality and feminism and sexism so i think i will find this book quite interesting okay so they are all the physical books that i own that are going on to my main tbr um i do have other book club reads that i probably will not read and they are definitely not a priority for this month that being i've got orange i can't remember the author's name is um and this is a manga and i i don't I haven't read manga before like I, i've just about dipped my toe in graphic novels i feel as though it's too much for me right now so i probably won't read that and then i have a book club at my work so that's an in-person book club so that's quite good um but for this month it's going to be atomic habits and I don't own a copy of this, so I'm going to source it from somewhere. Um, either just buying the audiobook or um, buying the ebook, probably because I feel as though once I've read it, I probably would wouldn't want it on my shelf. Um, so I'm going to do that. I, do, I like all I know about this book is that it's like a self improvement, help self help kind of book, which is. Not my cup of tea, but I'm trying this work book out, this work book club out and see how it goes. Um, so I will try and read that book. So let's see how that goes. Um, and then another Patreon buddy read is Blood Mercy um, and Blood Solace by Vila Roth. Um, so this is a fantasy romance and I'll read you this, this the and I'll read you the synopsis now. So one determined human, one honourable immortal, can their secret alliance save their world with their forbidden love be a death sentence? I feel as though that's enough to, <laughs> to be getting on with. So I was supposed to read Blood Mercy in February and March, but I didn't. So now I need to catch up because <laughs> they're already on the second book, Blood Solace. So I need to read Blood Mercy and Blood Solace. These are both a KU, so I'm just going to be sourcing it from there. Um, they are very big books, I will admit, so I may not get all the way through them as quickly um, as the buddy read is, so 
I'm just gonna go with that. And then another book club read that I need to buy actually, and I do want it on my shelf, but it's really pissing me off that it's only available in hardback and that the paperback sized size is a lot bigger than the other, like the previous books from this author. So it's Happy Place by um, Emily Henry. Um, so this is for the Kiss and Tell book club. And the other books by this author is Beach Read, People, People We Meet on Vacation, and what's the other one? Book Lovers. That's it. Oh my god. Why can I remember that? So all of them are like normal paperback sizes. And I've seen on TikTok that Happy Place paperback is like a really big paperback and it doesn't fit the same size. So I'm really reluctant to buy it. And obviously I want it in paperback to match with the other editions. Um even though the paperback is like way more expensive than the hardback, but I don't really want the hardback. I'm having a mess of time. So I may actually just source the ebook of this um, until I can find like a paperback that does fit because I would want this book on my shelf, potentially. <sighs> anyway, the synopsis for this book is a couple who broke up months ago make a pact to pretend to still be together for their annual week-long vacation with the best friends in this glittering and wise new novel for number one Times bestseller author Emily Henry. So... <sighs> It's going to be interesting, I think. And I mean, on Storygraph, it always already has an average rating of 4.54. So it's going to be, it's going to be, it's going to be interesting. It's going to be interesting. And then the last book that I've got is a buddy read and uh, we're going to read Flawless together. Um, and I've ordered this book, but so I will have it physically, even though it is on KU. Yes, I know. Defeats the purpose of having KU, but I don't care. Um, so that's coming today actually, so I don't have it physically to show you, but I will have it. Um, and Flawless is a cowboy romance, I believe. Canadian cowboy romance. Let me find the synopsis. So it's by Elsie Silver and it says, the rules were simple, keep my hands off his daughter and stay out of trouble. But now I'm stuck with her, there's only one bed and well, rules are made to be broken. Ooh, so we're following this guy who is basically going to shit <laughs> and his agent, says that he needs to clean up his image so he's stuck with his daughter um basically a babysitter and i think it's their romance yeah so that will be interesting interesting indeed but yes that is all my books that i would like to read in the month of may it's going to be interesting um, I doubt I'm going to get all of these books read, but hey-ho, I'm trying at least, I'm trying. <laughs> um, so yeah, the month of May should be an interesting month, it's my birthday month, um, my birthday's at the end of the month on the 26th, so I'm excited to celebrate that. So yeah, that's the end of the video, if you'd like to leave me a comment, but you don't know what to comment, please can you leave me a... What should we do? Should we do a TV? As it's a TV on Lessons in Chemistry's cover. Yeah, let's do that. And yeah, I hope you guys are all safe and well. And I will see you in my next video.